Hi everyone, it's Yuto from SatiRecipes.com and today I'm going to show you how to make traditional Japanese miso soup from scratch. This dish is delicious, warming and the perfect side dish for any Japanese meal. This recipe takes approximately an hour, um, makes about one litre of miso soup, which is about four to five servings. First, I'm gonna show you how to make a simple awase dashi using dry kelp and bonito flakes. Start by taking a pan and adding one litre of water. The water should be cold at this point. Then we drop in 10 grams of dry kelp. In Japanese, we call this kombu. The first step is to leave this to soak for 30 minutes. This allows to soften and slowly start to release its flavour. After 30 minutes, it should look like this. As you can see, the kombu has softened and more than doubled in size. So now we can move this over to the stove. Turn on the heat to a low to medium low setting. By heating it slowly, the kombu has more time to release its flavor. It's also easier to make sure we don't boil it. We just wanna heat it up until almost boiling. Keep an eye out for bubbles starting to appear. Once we get to this point, Remove the kombu from the water and turn up the heat. We're going to bring it to a boil. This is currently a simple kombu dashi, which can also be used as it is if you want to make a vegetarian miso soup. Once it reaches boiling, turn off the heat and add 15 grams of bonito flakes. In Japanese, we call these katsobushi. They're dried shavings of skipjack tuna. Allow them to soak for five minutes. You don't need the heat on here because the liquid is already near boiling. The reason I don't cook these is because I don't want the katsobushi flavor to be too overpowering. This method makes a delicate dashi, which is full of umami. While we wait the five minutes, let's prepare some ingredients for the soup. Here I have about 30 grams of spring onion. I already used the green part for some other dish, but you can use the green part too if you like. I'm just gonna cut it into diagonal slices like this. Next, I have two pieces of twice fried tofu we called aburage. I just cut into thin slices. I love adding abrage because it has a light sweet flavor and a nice spongy texture, but it's totally optional. So don't worry if you can't find this ingredient. Lastly, I have some tofu. This is about 150 grams. It's up to you whether you want to use firm tofu or silken tofu. Just cut it into small cubes like this. Okay, our ingredients are prepared. If you want to add more ingredients, I recommend things like freshwater clams or other vegetables like mushrooms. The katsobushi has been soaking for about five minutes, so now we're gonna strain the dashi. Take a bowl, place a mesh sieve inside and line it with kitchen paper. This is gonna catch all the tiny bits from the katsobushi and make our broth nice and clear. I love the taste of homemade dashi, but of course it's also okay to use dashi bags or dashi powder. If you want to know more, I've written a lot about types of dashi on my blog. Okay, let's pour this beautiful homemade dashi back into the pot. We're going to heat this up on medium and bring it to almost boiling. Once it's starting to boil, add your spring onions and abrage. I'm also adding a tablespoon of wakame, which is a type of seaweed. This is a common miso soup ingredient, but it's also optional. 
If you're adding a lot of ingredients, make sure to put the ones that take longer to cook at the beginning and then add the ones that take less time later. Next, I'm adding a tiny bit of soy sauce, just a quarter of a teaspoon. Now lower the heat to a simmer just to keep it from boiling and it's time to add our miso paste. I recommend using a mesh spoon or something like this, a ladle also works. Add 4 tablespoons of miso paste and whisk it in gradually by just submerging it in a little bit of dashi at a time. The reason we don't drop it directly into the soup is because miso paste tend to be kind of chunky and it doesn't dissolve in hot water easily. We need to break it up and add it gradually so that the tiny bits distribute evenly throughout the soup. I'm using our miso which is a mixture of red and white miso, but you can use whichever miso paste you prefer. White miso is usually quite mild, whereas red is quite rich. I find the yellow miso is the best of both worlds. However, different miso can have different saltiness, so always make sure to taste as you add. Okay, finally I'm going to add my tofu and just leave it on the low heat for a few minutes to warm it through. Be careful not to boil the soup after you've added the miso paste because it tends to lose its flavour if it's heated too much. Okay, it's time to dish up. I recommend eating the miso soup on the day it's made and if you need to reheat then it's better to do so on the stove so you can make sure you don't boil it. Sprinkle each bowl with a bit of green spring onions for some colour and there you have it, delicious miso soup, the perfect addition to any Japanese meal. Thanks so much for watching, if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and if you're looking for inspiration on what to serve with your homemade miso soup check out my channel i've got lots of delicious recipes that go perfectly thanks again i hope to see you in the next video